Good evening. Tonight, the 2016 Park and New Jersey S results are being presented. Before beginning, it is important to clarify some points about this presentation. Many of the initial slides present information provided by the New Jersey Department of Education. These slides provide a statewide context related to park administration and scoring. In addition, it is important to remember that the district and school level information is presented in percentages. Given that some of the building grade level cohorts have fewer than 50 students, the results of only a few students can influence a grade level percentage up or down. It is also very important to keep in mind that the state testing results are one aspect of a student's overall education. This snapshot, in keeping with the tenets of the whole child, is most useful when viewed as information that should be combined with other performance indicators and aspects of schooling. The following topics will be addressed in this evening's presentation. During the presentation, state information will be shared, district and school level information, as well as an overview of New Jersey ASP results. When looking at the 2015 and 2016 park results, it is important to keep in mind that 2016 was the second year of full implementation. The 2015 assessment was different than 2016. 2015 required two testing windows, the performance-based assessment that took place in late winter and the end-of-year assessment that took place in late spring. In 2016, there was only one testing window and the assessments were administered in a tighter schedule. All students in grades three through eight were expected to take the ELA and math assessments. We have a large number of students who also take the high school algebra one assessment and a smaller number who take the high school geometry assessment. It is important to note that graduation requirements are changing and will require students to sit for the algebra one park and grade 10 ELA assessment in the future. We are encouraging families to have their students take the Algebra 1 Park if they take Algebra 1 at the middle school to meet this requirement. As you may recall, Park scoring results in students being placed on one of five scoring levels. These range from not yet meeting grade level expectations to a high of exceeding grade level expectations. You can see that this sample scoring chart shows the range of levels from a low score of 650 to the highest score of 850. Note that level two and three are 25 point ranges. The next set of slides will discuss New Jersey 2015 to 2016 park comparison. You will note in the English language arts comparison, the grade levels are found on the left. Across the top are the performance expectations. And to the right are columns that indicate the change in the percentage of students performing at levels one and two and levels four and five. In this case, a green minus shows that fewer students were at the lowest levels, and a green plus in the four and five column indicates that more students scored at the college and career ready levels. This table focuses on a comparison of the mathematics scores. You will note that each grade level's total had students perform better. This slide indicates the number of test participants across the state for the ELA sessions. You will note that over 56,000 more students participated in the assessment in 2016. Test refusals were very problematic for many districts, especially high school districts in 2015. In Warren, we had a very high participation rate both years. This slide indicates the number of test participants across the state for the math sessions. You will note that over 65,000 more students participated in the assessment in 2016. The next set of slides will focus on Warren district and school results. This slide is set up like the state comparison for ELA and math. You can see the grade levels on the left, the performance levels along the top, 
and compare the results of the course from one year to the next. It is important to note that the course comparison are comparing two different sets of students, so we expect fluctuations in scoring. Teachers and administrators have reviewed this information to ask questions about why certain changes occurred. In this table, the area that stands out the most is the grade 8 line. This is something that we are having discussions with other districts around to see if they have similar patterns. It is also important to note that the 2016 grade 8 students on this chart scored very high as grade 7 students in 2015. So we are not sure what this drop means. It is important that we do not rush to conclusions, but use this information to ask questions over time. This table shows a cohort comparison from 2015 to 2016. Each of these results are from the same sets of students. This shows a different picture that enables educators to see how students are performing over multiple years. You can see that students in grade three increased their park performance in grade four. The other cohorts maintained steady growth. We would see more clearly the performance change from 2015 grade seven cohort into grade eight. This table focuses on course results for math. You again see the grades to the left, the change in performance levels to the far right. There are a number of positives on this table. We again see the change in grade eight. It is important to note in grades 7 and 8, we have students begin to take high school math courses, which influences the distribution of students in each of the middle school math courses, which also influences the overall percentages. This table shows the cohort comparison for math. You can see that in elementary grades, we have positive growth. In grades 6 to 7, we see a small drop in the percentage of students scoring at level 4 and above. It is important to remember that this is the year from grades six to seven that our highest performing math students take Algebra one and take the Algebra one assessment. And this number of students taking the high school, there are a number of students taking the high school geometry assessment and algebra assessments in grade eight. You can see that number increases over time in terms of the number of students that are participating within Algebra one and geometry. All of these aspects affect the percentages at each of the levels in math at the middle school. This slide focuses on school-based grade level outcomes. You can see the table focuses on 2016 English language arts results. You can also see that there are fluctuations and differences in every school across the building's grades and across the district. Again, it is important that we don't jump to conclusions about this information, but evaluate it over time as we get multiple years of results. This table focuses on our 2016 math results. Again, we see fluctuations across the grades in each building and across the district. We are not drawing immediate conclusions, but are engaging staff in discussions about the results and comparing this information to other measures of success and growth among students. State participation rates were discussed earlier in this presentation. This slide reveals the students that were tested at each grade level over the two years of park administration in Warren and the total number of refusals we experienced. Our refusals almost doubled in 2016. Some of these refusals were for medical reasons, some were for personal reasons. Our participation rates remained very high over the two years. The New Jersey Department of Education uses the National Assessment of Educational Progress as a measure of parks accuracy. The NAEP is used to compare how U.S. students as a whole perform in ELA and math at grades four and eight. It is considered a truer snapshot of a student's performance at these grades. Park results align closely with the NAEP results. This table indicates Warren student performance placed side by side with New Jersey, and the NAEP performance. You can see that over the two years of the park administration, our results fare very favorably to the NAEP and to the state comparisons.
At this time, I would like to address some common questions about how we use the park scores. In addressing these questions, the district took a number of steps. Since we received the park scores earlier this year, we have been able to have teachers meet on two occasions as district and grade level teams to conduct data protocols that enable them to collectively study and ask questions about reports that were generated with park data. The teams then developed ideas for further investigation and for how they might use the information to inform their instruction. Over time, we will continue to engage discussions about results and look for patterns and trends. However, we feel it is important not to react to any change in results that occurred in 2016, as we performed extremely well in 2015, and it will take us time and multiple years of results to identify what is a pattern. There are a number of public resources available to parents and to the community that can be accessed through links on this page. There is also a great deal of public information that is available at the State Department of Education website that provides overviews of park information and allows people to drill a little deeper into information that they would like to. At this time, I would like to present our New Jersey Ask Science results. It is important to understand that the New Jersey Ask Science is a completely different test platform with a completely different test administration than PARC. It's administered annually to students in grades four through eight. It's a one session paper-based assessment that's conducted on a single date in May. If a student is not present for that single date or for the single makeup date, he or she does not take the New Jersey Ask Science exam. New Jersey Ask Science is reported separately from PARC and has a three-level scale for reporting of scores. The test is administered in grades four and eight and assesses the body of science learning that has taken place up to that point. It is not an assessment of just the grade four and grade eight science programs. It is an assessment of the overall science experience and learning of the child. It's important to recognize some information about the limits of New Jersey S scores. You can see from these two quotes, the individual student results have varying levels of accuracy depending on where they fall on a scale. The scores are best used as a general picture of how students are doing in science, rather than a specific detailed analysis of how they're doing in science. The next set of slides will show a three-year comparison of New Jersey S results. This slide displays the mean scores for all students and for just general education students. You can also see the DFG or district factor group mean scores as well. These are schools with similar profiles to Warren. You can see that we do well when compared with the DFG group in both total students and general education students. This slide shows the proficiency levels and the percentage of total Warren students and DFG students who performed at each level. Each year, we have a high percentage of students at the advanced proficient level. It is important to note here that the DFG in grade eight science shows a similar profile to the Warren grade eight students in science. We are not sure why, but noted that across the DFG, this trend was evident, which makes us question whether a similar pattern is true with park results at the grade eight level. This slide reveals similar information to the previous slide, but focuses on general education students only. Again, you can see a high level of students at the advanced proficient level in grades four and grade eight, and a similar profile to the DFG. In closing, I would like to thank the Board of Education for the opportunity to present this evening. We have established a tentative standardized testing schedule for the upcoming year. Based on feedback from last year, we are going to consolidate the testing in each school to one week in which all grade three through five students across the district take part the same week. We are also gonna consolidate our grade six to eight testing in which all six to eight students take part the same week. This again will help to minimize disruptions to the buildings 
and enable us to push the park testing dates back later in the spring. Again, this concludes this evening's presentation. I want to thank the Board of Education for the opportunity to present. Thank you very much.